From years of anxiety to warrior and mentor, Bradley Robinson created the Anxiety Project to help you end your anxiety naturally. Let's mold the new you and let's end anxiety together. Hello and welcome to the Anxiety Project podcast number 63. I am your host, Brad Robinson, here with you today. And this podcast episode is on your safe zone and why people with health anxiety stay in their safe zone and are afraid to leave and to go out into the unknown. So I'm going to go over that and I'm going to go over my experiences with my safe zones and 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 how I got from being agoraphobic to being a warrior. Before I get into that, I just want to talk about the Anxiety Project program. This is my program. I've been working on it for about a year and it is now available on my website at unpluganxiety.com. This program is downloadable and it incorporates everything that I found to be extremely, extremely helpful when overcoming my anxiety disorder. And I incorporated it into my own program. So if you're suffering from anxiety or health anxiety and you want to better your life and and start living out your life with some purpose and meaning and and you want to achieve the goals that you've always wanted to achieve, this program's for you. Now, in this program, I have an audiobook which is the know your brain audiobook and in this audiobook i talk about the two pathways that trigger the anxiety response the amygdaloid pathway and the cortical pathway and how they operate and what you can do to work with those pathways to overcome anxiety because we should know why we experience anxiety right Why are we experiencing anxiety? So this audiobook explains why you experience anxiety. What's going on in the brain that's making you react this way? Also, there's a main section of guided recovery audios. These audios guide you through the recovery process and what you need to do to overcome anxiety. Amazing. I give you the tools and techniques to overcome anxiety. Also, I have exercises in the program. I have a reframing exercises. I have a reframing exercise that is used to release repressed emotional memories, traumatic memories from the body. I also have a meditation where if you're experiencing a panic attack or about to, you put on your headphones and you listen to this audio and it calms down the amygdala. A very, very powerful audio. And then I have uh, two more meditations included in the program. Also, there's a journal and workbook. Amazing information and content to help you end your anxiety for good. So go check out that program. The details are on my website at unpluganxiety.com. Go check it out. You will not regret it. Now onto the podcast. So leaving your safe zone and my safe zone when I used to suffer from extreme health anxiety was my house. Like most people, it was at home. You're close to family. 
you're, you're, you're in your environment that you feel most comfortable, you know, you're close to the phone, you're, 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 you're close to your family members. And so for me, it wasn't just my home, but when, growing up, my safe zone was just my neighborhood, my, my home, the beach, the coffee shops, all of the, this, this city I live in became my safe zone. I always avoided the unknown. The unknown for me was going into work in the film union. As you may know by now, I used to work in the film industry and starting out, I got accepted as an electrician in the film union. But to get work, you have to call in and make yourself available for work. But I avoided calling in because that, that for me was the unknown. That for me was Medusa. You know, the Greek from, from Greek mythology, Medusa with all the snakes on her head, the snakes for hair. That for me was going into work as an electrician, right? Each one of those snakes on her head was a problem, was a fear. And there were a lot of fears, so there, there are a lot of snakes, right? So I'll give you an example. One snake represents my fear of not getting enough sleep at night before my job. I was afraid of that. I was afraid of going into work tired and, and not performing properly. Another snake represents the fear of not being good at my job and, and making a mistake and everyone laughing at me. Uh, I was afraid of being judged. I, I had a fear of showing up late to work. So all of these fears was a snake on top of Medusa's head. And Medusa represents the challenge of going into work. And so I was afraid of facing Medusa. I was afraid of facing this challenge. So I, I, I constantly made excuses not to phone in and not to face this challenge. But what happens in the mythological story when people are face to face with Medusa? Well, they turn to stone. What does this represent? Well, turning to stone represents in, uh, a, a rabbit freezing when it sees a predatory animal. So it's the fear response. So that idea and that story of people turning to stone when they're face to face with Medusa is the anxiety response. So I was afraid of facing my anxiety of, of going into work in the film industry and, 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 and facing my challenges, right? So I, I was avoiding that anxiety. I was afraid of confronting and taking on that, that huge challenge. It seemed like Mount Everest to me. And so I made a thousand and one reasons why I shouldn't call into work. Well, I'm young. I'll, I'll get work eventually. Uh, you know, uh, you know, I, I, I don't feel at my best today, so I'm just going to call up my friend and, and hang out with him. Or, you know, uh, I should go to the gym, actually, because I feel, you know, I feel anxious today. And, you know, I, I'm not I'm not feeling 100 percent, so I'm not going to go into work. And then so I'd hang around negative friends that supported my lifestyle, avoiding really big challenges. And, and so I'd hang around these negative friends, watch movies, complain about life and eat junk food. But under the surface, these issues were still there, still present, still bubbling. And Medusa was growing in size. 
sooner or later, I had to rise up to the challenge and not avoid it. The more I pushed it away, the more it weighed on me. Time was passing by and I knew that unconsciously. And I was stagnant. I knew that I'm... I'm not getting anywhere in life. And looking on social media, Facebook, Instagram of people really pushing themselves and 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 getting the jobs they they always dreamed of getting made me feel envious and it weighed me down even more. It made me feel like, oh man, I'm worthless. I'm weak, you know. And I'm not good enough. Eventually, I got an editing job. And this editing job is in an office. And so when I got this job, I knew that it was more secure because the film industry is not secure at first. It's very unpredictable. You don't know when you're going to work. But I knew that, you know, this is more secure, and secure is good, don't get me wrong, but it wasn't really what I wanted. It wasn't really what I wanted. It wasn't my dream. So I took it. I took that job, the editing job, and at first, I had a lot of anxiety. I'm starting a new job, and what if I'm not good? What if I can't learn all the equipment? Because I had to learn all of this editing software. So I I was really anxious about it because first of all it's not really my passion editing and and second that's a lot of information to learn. So unconsciously I felt like, you know, this job isn't for me but at the same time I need to make money and I I I need to I need to actually do something in my life. So I took the job and I started to learn about the editing software. But here's the interesting point. I became comfortable in the job. After I learned the software, after it became routine, I just became comfortable and I became too comfortable. I settled in. And the job became repetitive. It became a routine job. And it's perfect for my old self who was afraid of pursuing his dreams. So it became a safe, a safe zone. If, if you want to think about it like that, it became a a safe zone for me. And so when, once you get into that routine and safe space, it's hard to leave that space into the unknown. Deep down, I wanted to look and pursue other jobs, but, you know, it's, it's too, it's too into the unknown. It's too chaotic. So I'm just going to stay in this routine. Years later, when I was struggling with severe anxiety, when I was going through my anxiety disorder, my safe zone then became my home. At this point, I had agoraphobia. I was afraid of being in a public place or crowded place and losing control and having a heart attack and having no family or medical personnel around to help me. Also, it's the fear of embarrassing myself in front of others while I'm having a heart attack. So that's agoraphobia, and this developed from my severe health anxiety. So I shrunk my world down to as little as possible. Then, the more I avoided the outside world, the scarier it became. So at this point, I was suffering from severe health anxiety to the point where Nothing else really mattered. Career, friends, nothing else really mattered to me but being healthy, 
right? I felt unhealthy. I felt like I was dying every day. And I was afraid of the outside world. I, I, was, I, was, I felt weak, humiliated, full of shame. And I was scared. Above all, I was scared. It felt like, it felt like life was beating me down beating and beating and beating me. And I felt like a puppet. I felt like I was not in control. I had no control over all of this chaos. So how did I get out of my safe zone? Being stuck in my home with agoraphobia, how did I get from lying in bed all day to now being a champion, to being a warrior, to being a guy who goes on airplanes and, and, and go, goes on road trips. How did I get from agoraphobia to going on a road trip far across the province? Well, first, the first thing I did when I was suffering from high levels of health anxiety was listen to podcasts and other people who went through anxiety, who went through the same thing I went through. And then I realized the truth while I was doing this. I realized that, hey, wait a minute, I have anxiety. I have health anxiety. What is it? What is, what is it about? And how can I overcome it? So I started to learn. I started to learn. And the truth to why I was feeling this way came forth. I knew that I had to take responsibility for this anxiety. No one else was going to help me. Believe me, I tried to get help from other people. That didn't work until I took, until me, until I took responsibility for my anxiety, things started to change. Then I took small steps to get out of my safe zone. I took really small steps. First, I took short walks around the block. Very short, right around my house, short walks, and, and just to get out into the unknown, just to get used to it. Because my brain was so sensitized that just that short walk would cause high levels of anxiety. So I had to train my brain that this small walk is actually safe and that I'm not going to die just from this short walk. So I had to show my brain that from here, from my house, and around the corner and back, that was safe for me. I had to show my brain that I was able to do it and survive. That's really important to understand. Then I took longer walks, and then my brain became comfortable with those long walks. And then I started to go to the coffee shop and spend a short time in the coffee shop, sitting down with my favorite tea. And then I, I might have had a video playing of someone talking about anxiety or a podcast about anxiety, something that made me feel good. So my brain started to associate that coffee shop as something safe. Nothing is going to happen there. So the more time I spent in that coffee shop, the safer I felt and the less anxiety I experienced. But that's gradual, you know. I would spend half hour at the coffee shop starting out, but then over a period of time, I would gradually spend more and more time there until I would spend five hours there. So I eventually was away from my home 80% of my day. And that 80%, I was at the coffee shop. I was at the library. And, and so I was spending more and more time away from home. And that's 
how you overcome agoraphobia and, and spending too much time in your safe zone. You gradually move out into the unknown, into the outside world, and you spend longer periods of time in those environments. But you have to do it. You're not going to overcome this if you stay at home and you're just too afraid to go for that walk or you're too afraid of going to that coffee shop. You have to expose yourself to the fear you are avoiding. And at first, it may not seem like it's going away. You might go for a walk for the first week and, 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 and you might go for that half hour walk and you may feel like, well, my anxiety is still here. I still feel sensitized. That's not the way to look at it. You have to do this for weeks and for months, months for you to become desensitized because it takes time for new pathways in the brain to strengthen. You need patience and time. Time is on your side. So gradually push yourself out into the unknown and spend more and more time in the unknown and then you will feel less sensitized. Remember, start locally. Start by taking that short walk from your house. Then take small steps. So from a 10-minute walk, make it a half-hour walk. And then weekly set goals. You know, the next week, I'm going to take a 45-minute walk each day. And then gradually build up. And then this will increase your tolerance. Then you'll be at the coffee shop for hours, just like me, where I was sitting there with my favorite tea, uh, writing notes from, from productive podcasts and, and watching uh, videos that I found to be quite interesting and educational. And this made me feel good. It made me feel like I was learning. But at the same time, I was away from my safe zone. And then eventually, I challenged myself even more by getting a, a job as a camera trainee. The more, the more I pushed myself away from my safe zone, the more confident I became. And eventually, I was like, you know what? Since I can overcome this anxiety, since I can push myself through this unbelievable pain and discomfort... I can actually pursue my dream job, go into the film industry. But little did I know, being a coach, being the founder of the Anxiety Project, was my dream job to help others overcome anxiety. But at the time, I wanted to push myself to see if I could actually do the job I always wanted to do at the time which was being in the camera department in the film industry. So I got accepted for that department, and then I went on to work. So that's how far I came. It was gradual steps. It started from that small little walk, and then it turned into me working on film sets. The thing that I really feared the most I ended up doing because of the small step I took today. So the more you spend time in the environments away from your safe zone, the more your emotional brain understands that you can in fact survive and thrive away from your comfort zone. My emotional brain began adding and attaching safety to walks around the block rather than fear. 
And so I'm going to end that podcast, this podcast episode on that note. Thank you so much for tuning in to this week's podcast episode. Remember, do not let anxiety define who you are, and I will see you on the next podcast episode. Bye. Brad's powerful anxiety recovery program is available at unpluganxiety.com. The Anxiety Project program is downloadable and has the power of anxiety recovery in your own hands. What are you waiting for? Visit unpluganxiety.com for more details. Recovery starts now.